Call the meeting to order. Uh, Kim and Don are absent this evening. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Looking for a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Consent agenda? For consent. Okay. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Committee reports. I don't know if there were any committee meetings. This I, month. I do have uh, one thing to talk about as far as the uh, uh, Southwest Metro. Okay. Um, we have uh, interest based uh, negotiations, and as part of interest based negotiations, uh, if there is uh, an issue that comes up that has to do with, uh, uh, you know, with uh, labor management or uh, contract or whatever, we you do get together. And uh, we uh, had a meeting last Tuesday to discuss uh, uh, UL, UALs on, a, uh, on uh, leaves of absence, uh, on unrequested right leaves of absence. And uh, it's something that I believe the legislature has directed boards to do, is to look at their uh, unrequested leave of absence uh, part of their negotiations or their contracts. And we decided that we'd just go ahead and look at ours at this time. And uh, basically, we had a good discussion and kind of left it as it was. But uh, did they have recommendations on what they were? Uh, well, we, we talked about well, one of the things that you know is in there uh, is uh, in our contract is that uh, people that have not been in the field uh, uh, for 20 years in a certain field and and then want to bump into another one if they haven't been teaching that. Uh, that particular class or that uh, license area, uh, that um, they, you know, 20 years is the maximum that they'll allow somebody to, you know, bump into that. You know, and so we were kind of debating whether we should, you know, raise or lower that number to 10 years or whatever, because you know, uh, not being in a field for, uh, you know, 20 years is a long time, and to be able to jump into a position, even though you're, you know. Uh, allowed to do it by the contract, we were thinking of maybe changing that, but we decided to leave it as it was. But we talked about several other things in there as well, but uh, basically we left it alone. Okay. Um, no community ed? No. And wellness? That was it. Superintendent reports. Okay. Um, just give you an update right now um, on our open high school principal position. Of course, Lonnie Seifert uh, uh, took the position of superintendent at Given Fairfax Winthrop School District. So his last day here will be this week, this Friday, June 29th. So we posted the position last week, uh, last Tuesday right away when it became official. And we're posting the position until uh, this Friday, June 29th. And then um, we're you know, just taking in applications right now. I feel good about uh, uh, some of the applicants that have come in. Um, I think this is a position that uh, <coughs> despite being late, I think we're gonna get some very good applicants and I feel very positive about it. Um, we'll screen and contact uh, people that will interview uh, early next week before the 4th of July. And we're looking at probably setting up interviews. I got Tony Boothy, our Director of Educational Services, coordinating this whole thing. And we're looking at interviewing probably either June 10th and June 11th, right in that time frame there. And then- uh, July. Being, July. Did I say June? <laughs> okay, let's not backtrack. July. <laughs> um, and be coming to the board uh, for approval with a recommendation on July 16th, our only meeting in July. So that's what we're looking right now. So um, it is late. But uh, again, like I said, I think we're getting some good applicants and it's a good position and I feel good about things. You have to have an acting principal for the 
month that uh, we're not really not right now. Tom Wetchka has taken over a lot of things, and then uh, working with Tony Boothy too. The, between the, the two of them, and and I'll just say this too: uh, Tom Wetchka has been in Hawaii the last two weeks, so it's been very difficult. Jill Sable, we've uh, Is he has, coming back? Has <laughs> <laughs> Jill Sable, dean of students at the high school, has stepped up and uh, you know really took over on the counseling interviews, uh, courting some stuff, and is willing to come in to a few more days. So uh, we're re very appreciative of her uh, doing that. So, but yeah, hopefully July 16th, we'll have a principal here. So pretty confident of that. Um, good news, got a couple things here I wanna share with you. First of all, uh, Minnesota State High School League had the Clay Target Championships up in Alexandria. And uh, as you rem might remember, we won the state uh, t title before, and this year we finished second. And uh, we scored 485 out of 500 uh, points possible, or clay target shots, I should say. And we had uh, Woodrow Glazier, as you remember, we had him here. He was the state champion uh, last year. Two years ago, we won the team title. Uh, Woodrow uh, finished a perfect 100 out of 100 along with Levi Chandler, uh, a, another teammate. He also was 100 out of 100. And uh, Nick Wagner, I believe, was 98 out of 100. And then other uh, team members were Connor Graff and Riley Kenyon, uh, Killian. So um, yeah, they did great, placed second. So we're very proud of them um, for their accomplishments there. Uh, the other thing I want to mention too, um, we had a joint powers meeting uh, earlier tonight and uh, Janelle Kirsch uh, did an aquatic center and review because we've almost been to the 12 month mark now, July 1st was when we opened. And since that time, just some, give you some little bit of data to share. Uh, we've hired over 85 staff people that includes lifeguards, coaches, front desk, concessions, fitness instructors, so over 80 uh, staff members, that's quite a bit. We've had over 14,000 paid daily admissions as of June 20th, 15,232 member check-ins. We've hosted 292 birthday parties. <laughs> that's a lot of birthday parties. Um, 196 swim lesson sessions with over 900, almost 1,000 uh, people getting uh, lessons. Uh, we've had over 140 swimmers and divers registered into our Neptune Swim Dive Club throughout the year. We've hosted two Neptune Club swim meets. Uh, we've had nine fitness instructors, including to my left here, one of our instructors, Julie <laughs> Schmitz. Over 630 classes. Um, so, and just, there's many other things, but um, you know, it's a very exciting time, and I think for first year, all those things, it's been very positive. Um, you know, and like I've told you before, I think it's very important with this fitness center. Um, we just started planning uh, our transition team right now. We've got uh, Tony Boothy, Heather Teets from Mail, Patty Solhide uh, with the city, along with Craig Most, uh, working in a transition team in the planning for that. So. Um, you know, construction will be coming later this summer, but uh, we're excited about that, but it's very important. Uh, the one thing we're lacking, we're doing great on the lessons, the club, the daily admissions, all this stuff, birthday parties, you name it, but we need more revenue through memberships, and I think that's really going to help us out by having the fitness center. So uh, the only other announcement with that, too, is just to want to make a note here next July 3rd, we'll, uh, because of the fireworks display here, we've shortened the hours from 5.30 to close at 5 next uh, Tuesday. And then 4th of July, we, uh, because we have an all-day, I should say, from 1 to 7, open sw free swimming at the outdoor pool. The indoor pool will be open from 5.30 to 3. So we've made some adjustments there. So all in all is uh, some good data to, to share and uh, very positive news in regards to that. So that's all I got. Thank you. Action items, the 2018 Literacy Plan. Martin is going to present that. Yes, in your board docs, our new Literacy Plan has been included. And so I just ask that you um, review and approve that for this next year. This is a required plan 
from the Department of Education that we have done now um, for many years. The plan is reviewed yearly with our elementary administrators along with our interventionists, which there are two from each of our elementary buildings. And so each spring we review the plan. The biggest update from this year compared to last year is we are decreasing the number of times we will be using the Fontes and Pinnell assessment. And so rather than benchmarking three times a year, we're going to benchmark our students two times a year, um, which is a recommendation from the assessment that we use Fontes and Pinnell. So we are excited for this change. And I think it's a welcome change as we just continue to reflect and refine on what we're doing and why we're using the assessment. Um, it will allow for our end of the year to have one less assessment in that after spring break. There's a lot of crunch time with MCAs, our FAST assessment, and in the past, Fontes and Pinnell. And so now we're going to do Fontes and Pinnell before spring break. And then MCAs, which are mandated, of course, by the state, those will be after spring break. And then we'll also do our FAST assessment after spring break. So that's the biggest change. Um, the other addition that we have added in there is information about dyslexia. And that is coming also down from the State Department. And um, it was included last year. And they are refining the requirements, which is helping us to clarify what we need to do. This summer, we are sending a few teachers to specific training on specific interventions for students that may have signs of dyslexia. And so we are excited to offer more services for our students that would be more targeted for them. Um, so we have added a little bit of information in there, and I am quite positive that next year we will add more as we continue to learn more um, what that looks like for our students and look at guidance that the state will hopefully be producing soon. Thank you. Questions? Pretty well everything the same, I guess, than last year other than that what was mentioned. Get a motion to you approve the... Plan. I'll make a motion we approve the 2018 literacy plan. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed with 5 0. Thank you. Thanks. Aye. Testing plan for lead in water. Oh. That's an exciting <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> that, I can tell you that. Um, so we're coming tonight um, to ask for board approval for our management plan for lead in water testing. Uh, this is something over the course of the last year that um, Minnesota Department of Health and Minnesota Department of Education is requiring all public school districts to adopt an official plan. Uh, the lead and water testing is not new to this district. We've been doing it ever since I've been here. Um, what it does is that we've been doing it every five years and we go through and take water samples out of uh, drinking fountains, kitchen appliances that, that use water, any potable water source and it's sent into labs and they test it for the presence of lead. Um, we have all those records on file. Um, last, the last testing that we did was the spring of 2017, but we did not do the middle school and the CEC because they were under construction, so we're, we're in the process of doing those right now. So um, basically that's, that's all it is, requirement that we have this plan and it's adopted by the school board. Has there ever been an issue? There's never been an we issue. We had, um, in some of the uh, appliances in this building, some of the drinking fountains we had, they were, they were not over the threshold, but they were really close. Um, in those cases, when you do find that, there, there's processes that you can use by flushing. So we would flush, flush them out in the morning so they were safe for use during the day, but it was, it was a couple older fountains here we had in this building. They're gone. How long does it take to get the results? From the um, usually a couple weeks. They come back from the lab in a couple weeks. Yep. Any other questions? Approve that, right? Yep. I'll make a motion we approve the testing plan for lead and water for 2018. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion Thank passes 5 0. Second reading and approval of the fiscal year 1819 budget.
Um, okay, good evening. Um, every year by June 30th, the school board has to approve the budget for the following year uh, for 18-19. So tonight is, I'm just presenting a few changes from when I presented it in May and be asking for your approval tonight. So the changes since the first reading really just have to do with the budget adjustments that, that I presented in um, on the workshop in, in, in June, on June 11th. One is to replace the CEC nurse with a health para that saved almost $12,000. One was reduced um, an early childhood special ed para via a leave of absence request, um, eliminating two custodian positions, one at Raven and one at Eagle for a total reduction of $134,100. And then I added the equity specialist. I didn't add that to the first preliminary budget because I didn't have any offsets yet. So I added that for 101.6. So that's a net gain or net loss of, I gotta look. Oh boy. Sorry, first day back from vacation, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, of $32,500. So the budget that I'm presenting tonight for the general fund is $32,500 um, less than um, the budget I presented in May. One word on the pension bill. So the governor did sign the pension bill um, and that pension bill did um, increase school district contribution levels starting July 1st, uh, 2018. Um, but there was also an increase in, re an offset increase in revenue. So basically what they're going to do is they're gonna increase the TRA pension um, contributions from districts and then they'll, in, in arrears, they'll take the TRA contributions that we, um, the increase in TRA contributions for 18, 19, and then we'll get that back in state aid. So the current MDE revenue models don't include that increase in state aid. So I didn't want to include the expense without the revenue. So I'll be including that in the final 18, 19 budget that I present and that you approve in December. So the preliminary budget overview, our total fund balance at the end of 1819 would be about 8 million and our unassigned about 6 million, which is 14.4%. If you recall, our goal is 8%. This is a little chart that shows the um, projected 1718 balance and the projected 1819 preliminary balance. You can see you've been going up and now we're you know, decreasing slightly as we go forward. Nutrition and service, community services, we did complete these budgets. Um, nutrition services, um, hope to end the year this year with a little over $300,000 in the fund balance and next year um, increase that about $30,000. And in community services, this year we expect to end at 440 and next year um, really take an increase. That, that high increase is due to a couple things. One is, um, the levy for the school age child care has increased significantly. Um, we have, you know, a school age child care for students with disabilities in our, pre, in our um, out of school time. Um, costs have gone up significantly and our levy has not kept up with the costs, but we had increased our levy significantly. So that is included in that as well as our out of school time program. Um, we expect it to make a significant more amount of money next year than it did, than it did this year. Why is that? Why, why? Just increased enrollment. More enrollment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And remember, this is a combined balance. So this is school readiness. It's early childhood. It is uh, regular community services. It's out of school times care, as well as our unassigned fund balance in, um, in community services. So there's several different funds that are um, combined in this. Our school readiness um, state aid has increased significantly under um, Governor Dayton, and that is also included in this. <clears throat> Excuse me. The construction fund, we anticipate ending at about 2.7 million, um, and the projected balance at the end of next year, I'm hoping, is gonna be very low. Um, we have finished out the um, huge bond project for all of our building. We'll have um, taken care of the high school roof and chiller project. And basically what we'll have left is about $10,000 from our athletic field um, bond that was sold back in 2014. And um, we're saving that. That has to be spent on, on the actual athletic field or the stadium. So we'll just kind of hold that in, um, in the fund balance for, for future needs there. 
And then our bond fund uh, will increase slightly. And again, that is just, you know, our levies coming in and, and estate aid for our bond payments and then our bond payments going out. So the next steps after tonight, after approving the budget, um, September, we give you updated enrollment. Right now, enrollment is, you know, looking okay. I didn't look at kindergarten today, first day back. Last time I checked, we were at 292. Oh, it's um, higher than that. Is it higher than that now? Okay, I didn't <coughs> look. I think it's 295. Okay. Three more. <laughs> I projected 296, so we're very close in that, in that regards. Um, October, we'll have the audit results. We're starting to prepare for the audit starting right now. We just got our final um, request from the auditor um, about an hour ago. Um, then December, we'll have the final budget, and then January, we'll have the updated five-year projections um, as we start the budgeting process for 1920. So any questions on the budget? A motion to I'll make a motion to approve the 2018-19 budget second all in favor aye, aye. aye. motion passes 5-0 thank you Sandy <coughs> meal prices yeah so um, before Kim Franta left um, her, she and I worked on our uh, meal prices for next year actually Kim's replacement Kim Heron started today and we're very excited to have her on board and hopefully she'll be able to come to a, a school board meeting you'll see her at events that you come to throughout the year. We're very excited about having her on board. So the first slide here is just uh, the year over year uh, meal data trends. Uh, you can see that our, um, you know, the, the things in green towards the bottom, our percentage um, participation is steadily increasing, which is good. Um, the only area of decrease we have for 17-18 as opposed to 16-17 was elementary breakfasts. The actual the number of breakfasts served went up from 92-800 to 93-300, but the overall participation level went down 0.89%. Um, really, Ravenstream is probably the area that is not um, participating in breakfast as much. And I know Kim will be, that'll be a focus of Kim Herons is trying to get that participation level up. But again, the number of bre breakfast served has increased, it's just the um, percentage. Um, so our numbers are looking very good um, as they're increasing every year, the participation levels, which is what you want to see is good high participation levels. Uh, our fund balance history, just some history, our estimated fund balance of a little over 300,000 this year, again, increasing slightly the next year. Our current lunch prices have been the same for two years, uh, three years actually, um, 255, 270. Um, adults, we actually did increase last year and then milk stayed at 50 cents. Our current kindergarten prices have not changed in, since the inception. Kindergarten is free, the state of Minnesota funds that. And then we have $1.40, $1.50 and then adults at 225. Are those meal prices comparable to other schools then? Or yeah, so that's more? the next slide. Oh, okay. So we compare them both to our comparable districts as well as surrounding districts. Um, so if I could make a general statement, I'd say in the, in the lunch category, we're slightly less than our comparable districts and slightly, very slightly more than our surrounding districts. Um, that's a big generalization. And breakfasts were actually um, a little high compared to our comparable districts and low compared to, our, to the local districts. Um, so... Uh, and milk, you know, were 50 cents. Um, the um, comparable district's 52 cents. The surrounding district was 47, so we're kind of right in the middle there. So what we're recommending is to increase all meal, lunch, and breakfast prices by a nickel for next year. They have an increase, the lunch prices haven't increased for three years. The breakfast hasn't increased um, since implementation. We really need to keep up with the food and the supply inflationary costs. So this would be the, the cost of the elementary would be 260, lunch would be 275, adult would go to 390, milk we're recommending stay at 50 cents, breakfast would go to $1.45, $1.55, and 230. Um, Kim and I felt, feel that this is a good, a good um, recommendation. We're not required to increase our, our meal prices. In the past, we have been required by the federal government. This year, they exempted us from that requirement if we have a positive fund balance, which we do. Yay, that's good. 
Yeah, and yeah, then, that's, then. that's good, yeah. <laughs> Andy, how, how are we doing as far as uh, people in arrears on their uh, lunch uh, Yeah, accounts? you know, it's, it's improved a little bit. You remember um, two years ago, we were at 60, or a year ago, we were at 16,000, but right now we're at about um, 10 to 11,000. But it's still, it's still way higher than it should be. Um, but we are consistently three times a year. We turn um, information over to collections, and some people are just choosing to not, not pay their lunch or their meal accounts. And you know, we have an angel fund, but you know, we want to use that pretty selectively, because if you keep paying lunch accounts with that angel fund, then some people start taking advantage of that, and so they're very careful with how they use the angel fund. Um, but yeah, we're still struggling in that area. Better, but higher than what we'd like to see it. And you'll see a, a, a resolution in July to, we'll have to transfer about $10,000 from our general fund to our food service fund to make up for that, because you have to use general fund money to, um, to reinstate those funds that we turn over, over to collection. You know, Sandy, if the a la carte pricing will be the same, or? A la carte's gonna go up slightly. We don't bring that for board approval. But Kim worked on that before she left, and Kim Heron will um, uh, finalize that. And um, if they want to do online, would that continue with no charge? Yep, the credit card payments online. Most people were really glad about that. We don't have as much cash changing hands at the schools, which is really a good thing. Um, so yeah, most people do the credit card. Have you seen a pattern where people do it every month or just maybe every quarter, or does is, is it just vary? I get a note that says their account balance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's very. Is it kind of like that then? Yeah. Or so we do we do the reminders. You know, people right. can set up their own reminders, and then we do as soon as they get to like five dollars, we start sending oh, them. Right. Yep. I know. <laughs> yep. You get, you get those. Yeah. So yeah, we have a process that we use, um, and then when they when they get bad, you know, um, you know, Kim Fronte would call them. Uh, now Kim Heron will. We're we're doing our very best to collect. Um, you know, we're willing to work with anybody on any payment schedule as long as they'll keep it up. We'll take five dollars a month if that's what it takes. Um, especially people that are on free and reduced that had an old balance. We'll take whatever they're willing to give us. Um, but if they don't follow through on their commitment, then we are taking action. So we need to approve the new lunch prices? I'll make a motion to approve the 2018-19 meal prices. A second. On favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 5-0. Now Denny gets to read a few things. Okay. The first one is uh, a resolution approving transfer from fund 01 to fund 04. Is there a comment about that, uh, Sandy? Yeah, so this is the transfer we do every year. Our early childhood screening expenses exceed uh, the, um, the amount we receive in state aid. And so um, prior to um, us starting to do this, it just built up a large negative fund balance in the unassigned fund balance in fund four. We really need to take care of that. There's a good reason to, you know, to transfer money from fund one to fund four to fund this because we do, it's child find activities basically too for special ed. So um, I've asked every year that you approve this um, small transfer from the general fund. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to consider the resolution to make a permanent fund transfer from fund 01 to fund 04. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to consider the following resolution. Whereas Minnesota statutes allow an independent school district to permanently transfer funds from the general fund to the community services fund for the purpose of covering unreimbursed early childhood screening expenditures. Whereas Minnesota state aid is insufficient for developmental screening expenditures. And this has contributed to an annual deficit in the unassigned fund balance in fund 04. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the New Prague Area School Board of Education that New Prague Area Schools will transfer $15,000 of its unassigned general fund balance to the unassigned community services fund for the school year 17-18. How do you vote on this, uh, Sherry? Yes. Ditton? Yes. Jean? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Item passes. 
Next, we have a resolution approving the severance commitment. Yes, yeah, so this is one again I, I bring every year, and um, I actually have a slight change. Uh, this afternoon, I made a slight change to the number um, with Lonnie's resignation last week when I was on vacation. Um, I wanted to include that in this resolution because there is a, um, a post employment payment for principals resign that have um, a certain years of service. So basically, just asking you, we had $284,000 committed at the end of last year. We expect to pay $20,000 this year. I'm not recommending that we commit additional funds, so we'd end the year at 263,947. Okay. At this time, I'll consider a motion to look at the resolution to commit funds for future severance and other post-employment benefit payments. Is there a motion? I'll make I'll a move. motion. Oh, thank you. We we'll move it in second to consider the following resolution. Whereas the current master agreements with principals and technology staff include a severance or other post-employment benefit provision that represents a future liability of the school district, whereas GASB 54 reporting guidelines allow by board resolution a school district to commit unassigned general fund balance to account for future severance and other post-employment benefit liability. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the new Prague area School Board of Education that New Prague Area Schools will commit a portion of the unassigned general fund balance to account for future severance and other post-employment benefit liability to enable better planning for future payments. As it desires, the school board can adjust the amount of money committed for these purposes within the general fund balance. The Board of Education committed $283,947 in the general fund for school year 1617, the New Prague Area Schools expects to pay 20,000 in post-employment payments during the school year 1718. The Board of Education commits an additional no amount in the general fund for the school year 1718. The total amount of the general fund committed at the end of the 1718 school year is $263,000. Uh, $263,947. $263,947. <laughs> uh, saying my big numbers correctly. <laughs> uh, how do you vote on this, Sherry? Um, yes. Jim? Yes. Team? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Item passes. Uh, next, we have the resolution establishing dates for filing affidavits of candidacy. We'll have a school board election this November. At this time, I'll consider a motion to look at the resolution establishing dates for filing affidavits of candidacy. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to consider the following resolution be resolved by the School Board of Independent School District 71, 721, State of Minnesota, as follows. The period for filing affidavits of con candidacy for the Office of School Board Member of Independent School District 721 shall begin on July 31st, 2018, and shall close on August 14th, 2018. An affidavit of candidacy must be filed in the office of the school district clerk in the fi $2 filing fee paid prior to 5 o'clock p.m. on August 14th, 2018. The clerk is hereby authorized and directed to cause notice of said filing dates to be published in the official newspaper of the district at least for two weeks prior to the first day to file affidavits of the candidacy. The clerk is hereby authorized and directed to cause notice of said filing dates to be posted at the administrative offices of the school district at least 10 days prior to the first day to file affidavits of candidacy. The notice of candidacy filing dates shall be in the form as stated. How do you vote on this, Sherry? Yes. Kitten. Yes. Jean. Yes. Jerry. Yes. Dennis. Yes. Item passes. Our last item is to approve the master agreement with the clerical for 2017 through 19. Uh, this is our last agreement, um, and I'd like to thank Sandy and Tim for doing all of the negotiations with all of the different groups. Um, it really has gone smoothly the past several negotiation times and it really makes a big difference to the board and the employees to see that it works so well here. 
I'll make a motion to approve the uh, agreement between the clerical and the school district. I'll second. Did you have any comments you wanted to make about it? Uh, no, it's everything is consistent with what we talked about the last closed session. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Uh, we don't have a closed session, so we'll see a motion to I'll adjourn. make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 5-0.